So I want to take you through the parts of the KM1 so you know how to calibrate it and set it up for the groove that you want to make. It's very quick. Uh, once you get used to it and done it once, it'll be forever in your memory. And then later I'm going to do some demos where I'm going to show you cutting grooves on the table saw, miter saw, band saw, with a router, and then ultimately on the jump, the Joint Maker Pro from Bridge City Toolworks as well. Now in all those cases, the way that you calibrate this and the way you set this up is identical. It just happens that you'll set stop blocks in different ways, so I thought I'd show you. Especially in the case of the router, that one's a pretty unique situation, and it's very useful on the router as well. Now the KM1 has two fixed surfaces. There's this outside edge here, and this tends to be the one that I use up against the fence, and you'll see this in the use. This side here is also a fixed reference. These two pieces up here are sliding pieces, and they collaborate together to basically set a variable offset from this fixed surface here. And what that offset is going to be is the amount that you need to nudge your fence over in order to make the second shoulder of a groove or dado cut. Now, initially when you set this up, you're just going to you know, tighten down this gray one or just hold it. And then you're going to slide the orange piece over in order to set the distance from here to the orange surface as the width of your curve. So if you have a regular eighth inch blade, you know, you might be right there. If you have a quarter inch dado stack like I'm going to be using for demos, it might be a little bit over there and, and so on. Now, you need this to be accurate. Now, putting this aside for a moment, I'll show you how you can set this very accurately from the material that you're cutting. This is a setup block I've made for my quarter inch dado stack. So effectively, you can see from the inset that I am doing, I'm making a kerf using the dado stack itself. So if it's not exactly a quarter inch, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna have that exactly on my block. And then I use a bandsaw to rip a straight part off to take off the piece that was previously near the end and slide it down. So now I've moved the kerf so that it's on the tip of this board. Now the reason why I want to do this is now I can take the KM1 and I can take this board and I just push until I have the orange over to where I need it and then tighten it up. Now it's set exactly to the kerf of that dado stack. Even if I had shims and everything else in it, it would be accurate. Now in my case, I only use my dado stack with the quarter inch blade or set for a half inch. So I've actually made setup blocks for the half inch here and then the quarter inch here. And then also I've did one for my regular standard blade that I use in the saw stop. So this way here I can make very quickly, I can make some shoulders with this or I can go ahead and cut grooves with these and I don't have to make these blocks over again. Now that we've set the width of the kerf, all we have to do is then adjust this gray piece. We can just loosen this up and essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna set this area here to the width of the groove that you need. Well, the easiest way to do that, of course, is to take the piece that you're gonna put in the groove and slide it in. Close this together, tighten it up, and you're done. Here's your fixed references, and then here's the one that tells you how much more to jog the fence over to make your other shoulder cut. So let's go do that on the table saw. So for this demonstration, what I'm gonna do is I've taken Three pieces of scrap out of my scrap bin. I've got this as a, an off cut of some resawing I was doing. And then I've got a piece of, of ply here and another piece of uh, wafer board from two different projects. So this one here is three quarters of an inch thick. So of course, this is gonna show us that case where we're gonna be defining the two shoulders and actually have some scrap in the middle that we're gonna have to clean out. But we'll demonstrate that. This one here being nominal half inch, which of course means it's nowhere near a half inch is gonna take uh, two passes. But the beauty of this is, I don't have to take a caliper measurement with this and then fiddle with, of course, all the chippers and the outside blades and then some shims and working around with that and still end up getting a sloppy cut. I think what a lot of people do is they mess with the shims and stuff until they get it to be just good enough and then they'll, they'll make the pass. With this, you're gonna see how accurate this tool is. Now I always find that when you're working with a highly precision piece of CNC aluminum that's been anodized, the best thing to do is to create a little jig made out of MDF to help you out. And that's what this little jig here is for, at least for my table saw. What it's going to be for is I place the KM1 here, and over here I cut a little tiny slot for a mag switch. This makes it easy for me to set a little, basically a stock block wherever I want on this field for doing my two cuts. And then what this does is I set the distance of the fence for one of the shoulder cuts 
flip the KM1, adjust the fence, and then I do the other shoulder cut. Now, you don't need to have a fancy piece of MDF like this. What I used to do for the longest time was I used to put it here uh, near on the fence rail itself, and I've just put a clamp on the other end. So this first time I'm going to explain a little bit more, but then we're going to do the other two quickly just so you can see how it all works. Basically, I'm going to set this fence to doing one of my shoulder cuts. Now, let's say that I want four inches from this end of the board to what shelf or whatever it is I'm going to be putting in there, right? So this is going to be, in a sense, if this was going this way, it's the lower shoulder cut. So in that sense, my next cut is going to be to move the fence further this way in order to make the next cut further up the board, correct? So in that sense, I'm going to set the reference point with the KM1 to being the long dimension, right? So I'll set a stop block here, and then after I make my shoulder cut, I'm going to flip the KM1 so that I'm going on the short distance, and then I'll scoot the the uh, fence over for the second shoulder cut. Okay, so let me use my little jig here just to lock it into place a little bit nicer. Right there, give it a spin, locked in place, and that was where I set up my fence in the first place. So let's make the cut. Oh, sorry. So now we're going to make the other shoulder cut. So what I'll do is I'll take the KM1, I'm going to flip it, so now we're going on the short dimension. And that's actually why I made this little piece of MDF kind of short, so I can tuck it in underneath. And now I'm going to scoot the fence over until I hit that reference surface again. And now we're going to make the second cut. Perfect, and there was no measuring. There's just a little bit of... There's enough friction there that if you were kind of gentle, you could probably leave it in there. But at the same time, I'm not having to beat it with a mallet to get it in. All right, so you're saying I just got lucky. Let's go with this board. This board was just randomly resawn from one of my previous projects, so actually there's no dimension, specific dimension to it. I happen to know it's a little over a quarter of an inch, which obviously if you're using a quarter inch dado is a requirement. So let's go ahead and configure the KM1 for this. Now, the orange is still calibrated to my cutter. I don't need to change anything with that. All I need to do is loosen up this side here for setting what the width is going to be for my groove. Let's pick, uh, let's pick this end of the board here, just in case there's a difference. I'm going to put this here, slide this over, and lock it into place. Now let's go make our cuts. So let's go ahead and set the KM1 for the long distance there. Now the short distance. Let's see how we did. Whoops, this side. There we go. This one here happens to be enough tight enough that it can hold in there, but I didn't have to beat that in, just gave it a good push. So now let's do a cut for this three quarter inch, this three quarter inch ish piece of ply. Now it turns out that when I made my uh, very nice MDF jig, I didn't account for the fact that if the kerf was actually pretty big, that I'd be bumping into my magnet. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna put this this way here, flip this around so that I have a reference surface. That's all you're caring about is just getting a reference surface. So that's gonna work for me here. Now let's make that cut. As we expected, there's a little tooth in the middle that we need to get rid of. So let's go ahead and cut that. There we go, perfect fit. So I want to show you how I use the KM1 with a router. Now in my case, I'm using the router on a guide rail. Uh, that's the easiest way to do it. You could also do this with an edge guide. If you were trying to do something like a groove just off of the edge, you could use this exact same technique with an edge guide. Now, I happen to have the OS 1400 chucked up with a quarter inch down spiral bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a groove for this little piece of 
half inch, nominal half inch scrap. So I've set this up to the width of my cutter. Uh, so what I do to set up the offset is I'm going to loosen, almost loosen the wrong one there, loosen this up, put the half inch stock in there. Beautiful half inch stock by the way. So now I have this set for the material that I want to make the groove for. What I want to do is I want to move this, I'm going to make one run with the router and then I want the router to be moved over to the right for the second pass for setting up the shoulder in this case here. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to slide this further this way. I'm explaining that because you need to figure out which way you want to put this KM1. Do you want to put the short side first or the long side first? So in this case here, the way I set up my fence is I'm going to use this is a sort of micro adjuster that comes with the MFK 700. It happens to fit well on these rods. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can always order one on the ECAT system, but why bother doing that? If you have, if you have a countersink or tapered drill bit like this that has a stop collar, just remove the stop collar. As long as it's the right diameter, it'll fit on here. There might be a little bit of play, but once you tighten up the Allen screws, you'll be just fine. So let me put this on here, scoot it over. Now what I want to do is this is where I want my first pass, so let me go ahead and lock this down. So in wanting to move the router further this direction here, the distance between this pad and the stop collar is going to get shorter. So that means my first setting is going to be to use the larger distance. So put that here, up against this pad, slide that over. Alright, so we've got this one in position. So the first pass, we're just going to run that, and then after that I'm going to loosen this up, put this on the short side, Scoot the router over until they bump and tighten up this pad. And we're ready to go. So before putting the router away, I thought I would show how you could use the KM1 here. You could, of course, put a stop collar on the inside of these longer rods and place the KM1 either way to set the reference for where this is located. Or if you were doing the routing much, much closer to the edge, well then, of course, you can do it on the outfeed side here. Now, that's just for the OF1400. This has some pretty long guide rails. Now, I happen to have a Bosch 1617 router in my router table, but this is the edge guide that I had previously for it. Now, this one here is also very long. The little stop collar I used for the drill fits just perfectly on here. And again, I could use the KM1 either on this side or this side, whichever way will work for me. Now, I'm not going to cut it with the miter saw, but just to show you, all it is is a matter of setting yourself up a different type of stop block. If I wanted to cut part of the shoulder here, I would simply place the KM1 off here on the side set up a little stop block so I can kind of reach in there and grab it. Clamp that into place. I can remove the KM1. Go ahead and make my cut. Put, the, put it so I'm out on the short. Slide over the stock. Make my second cut and I'm done. Now at the bandsaw I can pretty much use my little jig that I used at the table saw that uses the magnet for holding the KM1 up against the fence. And of course you know, you could hold this on this side here, although it makes much more sense to do it on the back side. But either way, it works the same way. Now, as we've seen before with the KM1, it's all a matter of having a decent stop block. Of course, if I'm trying to put, say, one of these dado grooves very close to the end, well, certainly I can put it here and I could clamp a stop block somewhere along my back fence like you normally would. But what if I wanted to put this more towards the middle of this board? So let me go ahead and clamp this in place. Now, one thing that you can do in this case here is you can use the portion that's off the edge of the scale. So let me put this in so that what we're going to do is we're going to be moving it more towards this side. We'll put the long end first. I'm going to put it up against this table and then I'm just going to clamp something onto this wood to mark my, my position. Alright, so let me go ahead and make this cut and then we'll slide it over. Now we had it for the long distance, now let's switch it over to the short. All we do is we put this here for the short distance, loosen this clamp, slide the stock over until the clamp bumps, lock this into position, and now I've got my second cut. And now I've got 
the part that I need to clear out. 